Hi, this is John from JavaFXTutorials.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about radio buttons. This YouTube video goes along with my tutorial from my website that's called Radio Buttons in JavaFX and JavaFXML. The source code can be found here at this website address up at the top, and the live demonstration can be seen right here. So what we're going to make in this tutorial is a simple car order form. Now radio buttons are these round guys over here where you can select only one at a time. In this simple mock-up order form, I can choose one of these three cars, and it'll give me a base price. I can also use these checkboxes to add additional features for additional prices as well. And then when I calculate the total, the total reflects the choices I've made over here. This application makes use of the grid pane, with the top row being a single label that spans across three columns, and then row two has three columns of V-boxes. Now, if you haven't ever worked with checkboxes or V-boxes before, you can check out my other tutorials I have on my YouTube channel under the JavaFX Tutorials playlist. Now let's take a look at how to write this code in JavaFX. This is how I start every new demonstration. I'm going to create two new projects, the FX application and the FXML, both to do the same thing. For the FX application, I'm going to give it some kind of a name, ending with FX, so I can keep it separate from the FXML. Once I'm done that, I'm going to create the other version in FXML, giving it the same name with FXML at the end of it. This will help me sort things out later when I go to work on both projects at the same time, because in the end, they're both going to do the same thing. So now that I'm done, the FX version, I'm going to erase all of the code except for the last four or five lines. I am going to need a stack pane or some kind of a pane, as well as a scene and a stage. So I'm going to clean everything else out there, as well as the comments at the very top of the code. Moving on to the FXML, the first thing I do is I go to Scene Builder and I delete the label and the button. Just click on both of those and just delete with the delete key and I'm going to design my own interface later. I'll save it for now. And the last place I go is the controller for the FXML document. I'm going to delete the label here as well that I deleted from the form, as well as the code and handle button action so I can write my own code later. Lastly, I'm going to remove the comments at the top and I'm ready to start my demonstration. So we're looking at the FX document here. There's the imports that I'm eventually going to use. I'll keep those collapsed for now, just reminding you that they're all there and we'll need them as we go through. So I'm going to start by declaring my radio buttons. I need three of them for my base, sport, and deluxe models. So you just declare them with the term radio button in front. After that, I'm going to declare two checkboxes, and they're going to be called CHK Extend and CHK Rust, and they're both checkboxes. In addition to the checkboxes, I'm going to need a button. So I'll declare that as BTN Calculate. That's going to calculate my totals. Next come the labels. I'm going to need four of these. LBL Title spans the very top row of the application. Base, Extra, and Total are used to display the other three amounts from the order. I'm going to put things into V boxes. So I'm going to need one for the radio buttons, the checkboxes, and the labels for row two of the grid pane. I also need a toggle group. This is going to be to keep the three radio buttons grouped as one family of choices, so I can only choose one at a time. In Start, we construct our radio buttons by just creating new radio buttons and passing in the caption we want for each one. In addition to this, we need, of course, the toggle group, and then we're going to set toggle group to all three of them to be the same group. That way, uh, JavaFX knows to treat them all as one choice. We can also write code to pre-select the base model by going set selected true. This will put a little dot in the first option when the form first loads. Now that we've got those put in place, let's add a VBox to contain them all. So we're going to create a VBox, which we're going to call radio, VB radio. And we're going to add to that three things, the, the three base, sport, and deluxe radio buttons. We're also going to set padding to 10 so that things are spread out a little bit. And that'll make up the first column, first row in column two. Then we need some checkboxes. So I've got CHK Extend and Rust. Those are my two checkboxes along with BTN Calculate. Now BTN Calculate is the only thing that's going to actually run any code. So it's the thing that's got to have set on action attached to it. Once we've got that done, we can create another VBox which will contain the two checkboxes and BTN Calculate. Next we move on to the labels. So I'm going to declare just the title label at first. This is going to go on the very top row. So I'm going to set the width to 500 and make sure that it's centered. So that's for the title. 
While I'm at it, I'm going to add the other three labels, base, extra, and total. And um, they're just three labels that are go going in the third column in the second row. Then LBL title dot set style. This is going to apply some styling to the top label. 36 point font, background color tan, and text fill of white. That'll get, make it stand out a little bit on the very top row. So now we can create our third and final VBox for the three labels that are going to go in row two, column three. And that third VBox is also going to have a little bit of style applied to it as well. A border color of black and background color of corn silk. So we're almost ready to go. We're going to start now with the grid pane root equals new grid pane. And root is going to have two rows. The top row is going to be just VB title or LBL title. So we're going to add row zero LBL title. And while we're at it, we're going to set the column span to three for that top label and set the horizontal alignment to center. That'll span three columns and be in the very middle of all three columns. Now we're ready to start adding the second row. And that's going to be row one. And we're going to just add the three V boxes, VB radio, VB check, and VB labels. And then everything is contained in all three of those. The rest of the code is as usual. All I'm doing is modifying the size to 500 by 175 and giving it a different title. So we're basically done, except we've got to write the code now for handle button action that we attached the button to earlier. So we're missing that method. So we're going to go down outside of start above main, and we're going to write that. So that starts with uh, private void handle button action, action event event, like always. Now we're going to declare two, three variables, base, extra, and total, to keep track of the user's order. Base is going to keep track of what they choose for the radio buttons. So this is how we see how a radio button's been chosen. We go if RDO base dot is selected, just like a checkbox. And then if it's not the first one, we use else if for the second one. And if it's not that one, then it must be the third one. All right, so the simple if statement is used to select the radio buttons. Okay, remember they're part of a group, so I can only select one, and I pre-select RDO base at the beginning, so one of the three has to be selected. We use a single if statement with else if and else to determine it. Unlike that, checkboxes we need separate if statements for each one, because each one can be independently turned on or off. So um, we use the same is selected for the checkboxes as well. And in this case, for each of those options that we select, we're going to take extra which starts at zero, and we're going to add uh, to that 850 and or 500, depending on what's been selected. Lastly, we're going to print the results. We're going to calculate the total by adding base and extra together. And then we're going to print the results to those three uh, labels. All right, so that's basically how we do it. Next, we're going to take a look at the FXML version of how to do uh, this program. So now I'm going to go to the FXML document, and I'm going to look at the controller first, actually, because that's where all the code is going to go. So in the document controller, we're going to declare a lot of the same variables we did in the FX version, with the exceptions of a few that we don't need. So we're going to use the at FXML, and we're going to declare uh, the three radio buttons, because all of them need to be used in the uh, code. In addition to that, we're going to declare the two checkboxes. Notice that each one is on its own line. Each one has at FXML above it. Okay, we also need to declare BTN calculate and only three of the labels, not the top title label, but the other three that are needed in code, LBL base, extra, and total. So that's all we need to add to this document, except for the code that goes in handle button action. Now the code is identical to the, to the FX version. So I'm going to go back to the FX version just for one second. I'm going to highlight the code, and I'm just going to simply copy and paste it into the FXML document. Once I've done that, I'm going to go to the very top of the method and add another at FXML directive. This is so that in the FXML document, it can be found by Scene Builder. Now we'll take a look at how we construct the, the design in Scene Builder. Here we're looking at the finished product of what we're going to make. I like how Scene Builder shows the grid and you can clearly see the rows and the columns. All right, so I'm going to destroy this now and we're going to start this again from scratch. So to get rid of this, all I got to do is delete the root container, which is the grid pane, and everything else in it will go away. So here it goes. That kind of hurt a little bit, but that's okay. We'll build it again. So in the container section, I'm going to bring out a brand new grid pane. So if I drop this down and I scroll over, or up rather, to grid pane, 
I'm going to drag it out onto the stage here. Now it doesn't quite line up at first, but if you just wiggle the outer borders of Scene Builder, it'll snap into place. All right, so I'm going to get rid of row two. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete this row. Delete. I also have to add a column between zero and one. So I'm going to right click column one and I'm going to add a column before. Okay, so before I move on, I'm going to click on the grid pane in the document hierarchy and I'm going to adjust the width and the height. Okay, so you can see in the layout section here, I can do a preferred width of 500 and a preferred height of roughly say 300 or 250. Um, I guess I'll go with 250. I think that's what I did in the FX version as well. Okay, so that looks about right. So now we can start building our um, interface. So we're going to start with the radial buttons. Now watch how I do this. I'm going to open up the control section and I'm going to go to the radial buttons and I'm going to just drag three of them out right away into position 00. zero. Now normally you're only allowed to bring one thing out per cell and it'll allow more than one but you only see one at a time. However down in the document hierarchy you can see all three of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the bottom one, I'm going to hold my shift key down and click on all three of them. Okay then I'm just going to go up to the top and I'm going to use the menu command to uh, wrap in a V-Box. Okay, so you can see how they're all into a V-Box. Then I'm going to drag it out to where it belongs, which is in row 1, column 0. Okay, so we'll repeat for the next column. Next column has two checkboxes and a button, so I'm going to bring out one checkbox and a second checkbox and then a button, and they all just kind of stack on top of each other. Okay, so now I'm going to use the same technique. I'm going to click on the bottom one, and I'm going to use my shift key to select all three. I'm going to go up to the top, and I'm going to wrap into a V-Box. Now, okay, that button's on top. I want to bring it to the bottom. So I can just drag it within that V-box to below the checkboxes. There we go. And from the side, I'm going to drag it out and put it in place in the middle row. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is add the labels for the third row. So I'm going to bring down three labels. Now, watch. This is what I did before. I thought, why don't I just put it where it goes in the first place? So watch what happens. So if I, I can do that. I can certainly put all three of them there. It'll let me do that. Okay, now I'm going to wrap them into a V-Box the same way. I'm going to shift-click all three of those, and I'm going to go to the very top, and I'm going to use the menu to uh, wrap in the V-Box. But then it puts it back into 0, zero for some reason. I don't know why that is, but uh, we can live with that. We can just drag it back where it belongs. All right, so that uh, builds up the, uh, the bottom row there. I think what we'll do next with each V-Box is we'll set the padding and the spacing. All right, so we're going to go to the first V-Box and we're going to put in 10 for the padding and then spread that out across all four sides and the spacing will be 20. All right, and we're just going to basically go to all three V-Boxes and do the same thing. And you can see as we do this, it updates automatically within Scene Builder. So padding of 10, spread that out everywhere and spacing of 20. Okay, that's looking better. And then we'll go to the label V-Box and do the same thing. Um, padding of 10 and the spacing of 20. All right, so that bottom row is looking better all the time. Let's take a look at the top row now. So we need a label that's going to span across three columns. So if I bring it out into 0, 0, the first thing I want to do is change the column span to remaining. All right, or I can type 3, but I'll just put remaining. That means it'll spread across the remaining columns. Also want to set the H alignment to center. Now that does not set the centering of the text within the control. So watch this. If I change the preferred width to say 500 or maybe just 450, that way it spreads out across most of the width of the application. The contents inside the control still isn't centered. This confused me at first, but then I realized I got to go to the properties and set the overall alignment of the contents to center as well. So that puts it in the center and the text itself in the center as well. All right, while we're here, let's add some uh, style. So we're going to add a few things. We're going to add the background color. So that's FX background color. And we'll set that to tan. So it's really easy to do this in Scene Builder. Just customize the look of, the, uh, of any given control. Okay, I think I want to make the font bigger. So I'm going to add another uh, call to the FX font size. And this I'll put to uh, 36px for 36 pixels. That'll make it bigger. And I think one more thing I'll do is add some FX padding. So I'll hit the plus sign a third time, and we'll go down to FX padding. Set that to 10 pixels as well. That'll spread things out a bit. That top row doesn't need quite as much room, so I'm going to just use my mouse, and I'm going to click between the two and drag it up a little bit. See how easy that is to resize each row? Very nice. All right, so now we're going to go to each control, and we're going to um, change the text property. 
So I'm going to go back to the original code. I'm going to copy and paste the labels that I used to construct this thing in the FX version. I'm just going to control C and control V right into Scene Builder. All right, so we're going to go and do this. I'm not going to have you watch me do all of these. I'm just going to do the first and second one. Then I'm going to pause the movie and change the rest myself. And you can do the same thing. We're just going to go to each one. Use the document hierarchy panel here to uh, change the text for each one. So now we're back and we've got all of them done. And um, I noticed that um, the uh, spacing's a little bit off here. So I'm going to make an executive decision and go back to the radio button. So I'm just going to take out the word model. I guess that's a little bit redundant. And plus, I'm sort of struggling for some space here. So the easiest thing to do is just to get rid of that. I'm also going to adjust the column width of the first column. I'm going to stretch it in a little bit, just like I did with that first row. And as I do that, it gives me more room for the checkboxes. And then their entire text comes into play. Also going to spread the labels out a little bit as well so that it looks a little bit more centered. All right, so that looks much better. Now, speaking of the labels, I'm going to set the uh, the min width and the uh, preferred width, I think, for each one of these to 125. That way I know I've got enough room later on when I'm running the application. I'm going to be printing some numbers in here, so I want them to be able to display. So this will ensure I've got enough width to add a number beside each of these uh the text in each of these labels. Okay, so I'll just quickly go and set each of these to 125. All right, I'm also going to apply a little bit of styling to this third V box here. So if I click on that V box, if I go up to the, um, I guess it's in the property section, is where the styling is. And just like that top label, I can just add some styling. So this one's going to just be the, um, the border color. Um, there it is there. And I'll set that to black, which is hashtag 000. That's going to give it a black border. Okay, and then maybe I'll add the background or maybe I'll just leave it like that. Okay, so we're going to preview this and you're going to notice that right now I can select everything I want to, including more than one radio button. So I don't want that to happen. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to each of these radio buttons and I'm going to just go to the first one and add group as the toggle group. That'll allow me to choose that same group for the others as well. And that'll force the issue of only being able to select one at a time. This is one extra step you've got to do with radio buttons to make them behave the way they're meant to behave. All right. Okay, now when we deleted the grid pane, we also lost reference to the document controller. So I've got to go back to the controller here and quickly put that back in. That connects it to the document controller and allows me to connect each of these now to their FX ID. So as I go to each of these now, I'm going to open up the code and I'm just going to quickly go from the drop down list and match up each of these to uh, the proper uh, FX ID. Okay, and again, it's reading these from the document controller. Everything that I declared at FXML on is now appearing in the list here. Okay, now um, with the exception of the button, all we got to do is choose the ID. But I'm coming up to the button here in just a second, and I've got to stop there and also do the, uh, the, the on action. So BTN calculate is the button, and um, while I'm at it, I'm going to also change the caption. I forgot this one for some reason. Um, this one should be calculate total. Okay, and now the on action should be handle button action because it needs to uh, run that code. All right, now we're left with the labels, LBL base and LBL extra and LBL total. And that is it. We are finally done. All right, so um, all we got to do now is save this document and we're just going to close this off. Now I find when you make changes like that, you should often go up here and right click and do a clean and build. Okay, that'll just sort of recompile everything. And then I'm going to run the FXML version so you can see it as well. And here it is popping up. And that looks pretty good. And it works the exact same way as the demo at the beginning when I showed you the FX version. And the totals work nicely. And uh, they're calculating correctly as well. All right, so that is the radio button. Hope you enjoyed that tutorial. This is John again from JavaFXTutorials.com. Hoping you'll join me again for another JavaFX lesson in the future. Bye for now.